Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video we are going, we're traveling, all the way to Arkansas. I'm joking, I'm joking, Arkansas. But uh, I can saw how that could be confusing. This is the story of Beverly Carter, house seller, real estate agent. Is there such a thing as a fake estate agent? And she lived in Scott, uh, near Little Rock, with her family. In 2014, Beverly went to a house viewing, and that's when everything kind of uh, kicked off. Kicked off by a man named Aaron, not Aaron, Lewis, right? And I don't know how some of these people, like, exist. We've been doing this for a while. They just somehow do. So let's give it a go. So it's Little Rock we're heading to. I believe uh, this is our first time heading to Arkansas. Might want to jot that down, though it has its work cut out for it if it wants to join the levels of Florida, Ontario, Texas, New York. That's the major leagues. Little Rock is the capital of Arkansas. Today, the population is around the 200,000 area. Back in 2014, it was only marginally less. And whew, pretty uh, not great to any Arkan Arkansasians, Little Rockians out there. Don't worry, you are big rocks to me. In 2018, Little Rock was ranked the 19th worst city to live in in America, with nearly four times the national average crime rate. I was gonna say, you know, at least he got... Really seems like there's just nothing to do there. Let's move on. Anyways, it was there that Beverly Carter sold houses, right? I'm sure she had her work cut out for her. Beverly Carter was born Beverly Lowndes in 1963. She was born on McClellan Air Force Base in Alabama, and when she was a young'un, a real young, 16 years old, she married Carl Carter, a native of Scott, Arkansas. And they would remain together for the next 35 years. Together, they would have three boys, Carl, Christopher, and Chad. And from them, a number of grandchildren. Middle son Christopher would actually pass away, tragically, in 2003 at age 19. He was in a car accident. The characters moved around a fair bit. Uh, Carl, he worked in construction, so he was, you know, following the construction sites. And Beverly, she stayed at home to raise, you know, the kids. But once all three of them were old enough to attend school and keep out of divilment, she then got a job as a receptionist and then into the real estate game. Was she any good? Was she fuck? She ruled. She was funny, charming, adorable, and she was number one. A cry leak realtors. She would have gotten all the leads at Glen Gary Glen Ross. She would have got that coffee. Coffee's for closers only. A always B B C closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Beverly Carter was the top selling realtor in North uh, Little Rock and number five statewide. Number five in the state. Want to know how many realtors there are in Arkansas? Me too, but I think that's pretty good. After the Carter family struggled to overcome the tragedy of Christopher's death, and it was a long struggle, life seemed to be going well once again. Christopher left behind a baby daughter that Beverly helped raise, and the other two boys had families of their own. Beverly was full of life. She started taking part in races. She had cosmetic surgery. She was a success. It was on a hot uh, September day in 2014 that Beverly Carter once again had a house to show. That day, Thursday the 25th, it was a busy day for her, full day at the office, ending with that final showing where the prospective buyers were offering cash money. She called uh, Carl Sr. at about 5.30, letting him know she had the final showing at 6. She'd head on over, it was a young couple, uh, Stephen and Crystal Adams, She'd give him a goo at the gaff, and then on the way home, she would grab some grub. I'll see you later. The house she was heading to was at 14202 Old River Drive, on the outskirts of Scott, by Old River Lake. So which is it? And that was it. It was a few hours later, at 9pm, that Carl, wondering where Beverly was and being unable to get in touch with her, started to worry. 
He knew where she was going, the address of the house, so he drove over that night. Outside he found her car, a brown Cadillac. Inside the car, her purse, all her bits and bobs still inside. And the door to the house was ajar. But other than that, there was no sign of Beverly or anyone else. That was, uh, hmm, odd. So he called the police. The realtor's office was checked. Other houses that Beverly was, was, you know, selling were checked in case, you know, maybe this couple wanted to view other houses. Nothing, nada. As the local police, you know, Beverly's family, her friends started kind of milling about, basically kicking the tar. Nobody was sleeping that night, obviously. Where the shit was Beverly at about half 12, 1 a.m.? Her husband, Carl, and some of Beverly's co-workers started getting texts from Beverly's phone. As you can imagine, as soon as they seen Beverly, they were like... She said she was fine, you know, her phone just died, but all was good. Now, Carl, uh, he'd been married to Beverly for 35 years. Beverly was not a drinker, so... Beverly's co-workers, they had, a like, a system. If, you know, uh, they were ever out of viewing and there was trouble brewing, you know, they would, their code word was red folder, as in uh, she might text saying, hey, I need that red folder here. Help. One of Beverly's co-workers texted Beverly back, just wondering if you put that red folder back on my desk. That was left on red. The relief at getting messages from Beverly's phone uh, evaporated, you know, uh, pretty quickly, as they knew it was not her. The investigation, it's, it then, you know, pretty quickly turned into what it will look like a kidnapping. A family torn. I wish they would let her come home. After Beverly Carter didn't come home to her family in Scott last night. I don't care if it's on the stop sign. The Carter family says they hope investigators find answers. We'll walk away and they'll never hear from me again. Carl Carter filed a missing persons report with the Pulaski County Sheriff's Department Thursday night. His wife, a real estate agent, was showing a property listing Thursday evening. She didn't come home after that. Don't sound like mom. I said, no, sir. It doesn't. There wasn't much to go on in the house. No clues or sign of any disturbance at all. Nothing to go on there. In fact, the only thing that stood out were tire tracks next to the front door. As if somebody was carrying something out of the house, something big, and you want to be outside in full view as little as possible. A neighbor at one point during that evening saw a black vehicle outside that house and a skinny guy milling about. Not much else. The search began. We expect we will get information today. My expectation is to find Beverly and find her okay. But we have time is of the essence. The plan today is we're going to set up a grid around the area where Beverly went missing and search everything we possibly can. Hopefully not find anything except her. I've had texts and, and calls from the general public. I've got calls from all over the state from realtors and owners and brokers that are pledging anything and everything that they possibly can do to help out. Eyebrows, you know, around this time started to raise, as they usually do, always, towards the husband, you know. Hubby want wifey Ghani. Classic. Bit of a cliche at this point, come on, folks. I just would like to have my wife back. I beg anybody, just take her over and drop her off on a sidewalk and keep driving. I ask for that right there. Somebody else will get her. I guarantee you. There's some crazy people out here in the world. I mean, sorry, there is. And uh, I just pray that they'll be better than... Beverly been doing it for about 12 years. She knew what she was doing. She was dang good at it. You know, the usual, ooh, bet they had money troubles too, which they did. Ooh, you know, bet they had life insurance policies too, which they did. Oh my God, Carl had previously had an affair and he also had smacked Beverly in the face one time before, too. It's like, ticking all the boxes. That's it all there, why even bother, you know, investigating? Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you as all- No. So while the police were looking at Carl, they were also looking for Beverly. The contact information that, um, that couple Beverly was supposed to go meet, the Stephen and Crystal Adams, 
Their information, email address, phone number were fake. Police determined that almost immediately. So who were the couple Beverly had gone to meet? Well, they did the old enhance. Enhance. Doing a bit of the old, you know, clickety clackety. <laughs> Computers. They managed to determine uh, the identities, you know, behind the fake email address and the fake phone number. And from there, they got a house. That led them to the real Stephen and Crystal Adams. Though it was Aaron Lewis, 33, and Crystal Lowry, 41. They immediately started surveilling the Lewis Lowry home. They saw a guy matching the description of the man the neighbor saw. However, what happened then was kind of crazy. See, the police's cover got blown. Aaron, he spotted him, watching him, was surveilling the house, so he legged it into his car and a full-on, like, a high-speed pursuit began. It ended badly for Aaron when he crashed his car, fucked up his face, and had to be taken to hospital. But from hospital, he managed to escape. Deputies say that they are now searching for 33-year-old Aaron Lewis in connection with Carter's disappearance. They say that they consider him to be dangerous. The hunt was on. It was short-lived. Half his face was hanging off. 911. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm sitting over here. They're, they're looking for a guy here uh, that was involved in the realtor being kidnapped. And this guy looks like him. And he is nervous, and he's out here at a bus stop. He's wearing a black shirt and some, and some jean shorts. And he went into the subway. All right, we'll get someone out there. Okay, now I had a guy walk out there and walk, walk, talk to him. I just went out there to see him. He says they think him. Okay, but don't tip him off or anything. Uh, oh, we'll I'm get not, someone no, out there. Not. Yeah, he's in subway right now. He ducked into a subway. <laughs> that was uh, the last time he'd be eaten fresh, let me tell you. And the police soon arrived afterward. So they had Aaron in custody, their number one, you know, suspect. But where the shit was Beverly? Aaron had a history of petty crimes. He worked as a truck driver and in construction. And in September 2014, he was working in the hmm, kidnapping industry. He readily admitted to taking Beverly. He said he was looking online, found her, felt that she would have a lot of money, and to make Beverly feel more comfortable, he got his wife, Crystal Lowry, in on it. She helped arrange the meet. However, he showed up alone to the house and then tasered and kidnapped Beverly. He said there was another guy in on it too, a fella named Trevor. Last he had seen of Beverly was she was with Trevor. Did you kill Beverly Clark? No. You did not? No. Yeah, Who did? Say. I had a, a co-defendant. I haven't seen her for two days. Now they're showing pictures of this. I haven't seen her. I had a co-defendant, Trevor. Who's Trevor? He's Air Force at the military base. And what's your relation to Trevor? They want, he, he's got texts back and forth to me and him, and then uh, they want in my phone. Why Beverly? Why Beverly? She was a rich broker. Do you have anything to say to the family? Sorry. What else do you want to say to her family? Sorry. Why Beverly? Because she was just a woman that worked alone, a rich broker. Did you kill her? No. <laughs> Aaron also had this recording. Carl, it's Beverly. I just want to let you know I'm okay. I haven't been hurt. Just do what he says and please don't call the police. If you call the police, it could be bad. Just want you to know I love you very much. So Aaron said, well, she's alive. Last I seen of her, right? Trevor, she's with Trevor, wherever they are. By the way, Trevor was tracked down, he was real, and he was really far away from Little Rock, Arkansas, on a, uh, like he was on a military base. So I don't really know where Aaron was trying to do there. Pretty easy to figure that one out. So Aaron led them on a bit of a goose chase to different places he said Beverly could have been but nothing. Eventually, the police checked an old construction site Aaron had worked at before. 
and there, an officer saw an elbow sticking out of the ground. It was Beverly. Aaron and Crystal were both charged with kidnapping and murder. They both pled not guilty. Officially. Aaron, are you hurting for some reason? Yeah. What's hurting? I got in a car wreck the other day. I haven't been to the hospital yet. Um, you pled not guilty. Why? Because that's what my lawyer said to do. Did you originally in the courtroom say you wanted to just get it over with, that you had pled, did you wanted to plead guilty? Yeah. Why? Because I just want this all over with. You would even be willing to plead guilty to the capital murder charges. So did your lawyer uh, basically encourage you to... I'm just sorry it all happened. What was that? I'm just sorry it all happened. I just want it all over. Aaron would later tell a different story. He didn't want to kidnap nobody. I never denied her going with me as far as kidnapping. I've never kidnapped anybody. Now wait till you get a load of this. You want to hear the real story? The real story? The real scoop? According to Aaron Lewis, there was no kidnapping plot at all. In fact, Aaron was going to meet Beverly at that house. He wasn't interested in buying it. Nope. There were. They were. Pound Town. They were having some kind of uh, affair. Aaron and Beverly. Crystal was in on it too. You have admitted to kidnapping Beverly. How did it go from something like that I did the, to this? Let me let me clarify something. What, let me ask you a question. Where do you get the admitting to kidnapping? I was told you know, when we were walking. I just want it all over. A woman that worked alone, a rich broker. Beverly went back to Aaron and Crystal's. They had some kind of threesome. And Beverly got suffocated during it and died. I'll say, I'll say this. I didn't kill her. I didn't murder her. And anything that did occur was an accident. Oh, um, I can prove it. I mean, it really doesn't, it doesn't really matter if, if everybody that I've encountered between uh, being arrested and uh, up to now thinks that I'm a piece of crap, that people, people yell at me that uh, uh, I'll be, some police officers have said, uh, can't wait to see you with a needle in your arm and stuff like this. It's like, wow, you're, you're, you're just basing everything off of what you've seen off the news. She was just a woman that worked alone, a rich broker. That was it. Uh, I don't know where this shit comes from. It's actually, it would be kind of funny if it wasn't so horrific. So she, you're saying that Beverly got in your car mm -hmm. at her own free will that day. So his defense was going to be there was no kidnapping. The voice recording, you know, that, 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 that one. I want you to know I love you very much. He had used computer software to mimic her voice, you know. Um, ooh, just couldn't remember which one. In all fairness, you can actually do that nowadays. It's pretty easy to get, like, that kind of deep fake voice defect te technology. Back in 2014, the reason, by the way, he said he made up that, even though, you know, there was no plan, of course, to ransom her at all. Uh, he said, you know, well, she died when they were all having sex. So he's like, I'll make this, may as well get something out of it. No matter what it is, the TV, the newspaper, everything that I've seen, USA Today, there's no motive. Mm -hmm. All right. No, they've actually said, I mean, your statement mm -hmm. that you probably recall that you told me when I said, why Beverly? You remember what you said that day? What was it? The Rich woman. Rich woman, rich broker. So, and the deputies have described it as a crime of opportunity. Do you think that that particular statement is what led them to that? To thinking that they could classify this as a crime of opportunity? What's a, what's a crime of opportunity? That went down like a lead balloon. Crystal Lowry pled guilty in return for a reduced sentence and she would testify against Aaron. Do you have anything to say to the family? Uh, are, you, are you sorry for her death? Yes, I'm sorry for her death. Why did it happen? I'm 
so then the trial began. We've already heard Aaron's defense. What was the prosecution's attack? Well, exactly what it appeared to be, a kidnapping and ransom gone wrong. After scoping out potential victims and eventually narrowing it down to a realtor who they felt would, you know, have a lot of wealth, uh, they lured Beverly to that house, kidnapped her, and then brought her back to their home, Chris Lone Aaron's home. The plan was to demand a ransom from Carl Carter, $100,000. However, the plan began to unravel pretty quickly. Uh, they didn't expect the police to be on it as quickly as they were. And secondly, when they had Beverly back in their home, they had Beverly locked in the bathroom. In the bathroom, Crystal Lowry had prescription bottles with her name on them. So they they assumed Beverly would have, you know, seen the name, could ID them. She had to go. Aaron then took Beverly out to that construction site where she would, you know, be found. And then he did something pretty horrible. Uh, he wrapped duct tape all over her face so she would suffocate to death slowly. On January 15th, 2016, the jury returned a verdict. Aaron Lewis was found guilty of capital murder and kidnapping. He was sentenced to life without parole. Crystal Lowry got 30 years for her role in the kidnapping and murder plot. In 2020, Crystal sent a letter to the governor asking for her sentence to be cut in half. Because, she said, she found God now, you know, so it's all good. She was best buds, you know, with Jesus, so, uh, you wanna let me out sooner? No! The Carter family actually tried to sue Beverly's employers, Cry Lake, basically saying the company failed to provide her with training and guidance to avoid, uh, you know, being kidnapped. The suit also claims the company didn't conduct background checks or encourage realtors to conduct those checks on unknown buyers. Another problem, the family says, is the company didn't have a policy of arranging preliminary meetings at offices or public places before meeting new buyers out in the field, all of which, they say, would have protected Carter when Lewis and Lowry called. The wrongful death suit was dismissed. Some good did come out of all of this, though. Beverly's son, Carl Jr., started the Beverly Carter Foundation, which goes around basically teaching real estate agents how to be safe. So that something like this you know, doesn't happen again. Something that, you know, like what happened to Lindsay Buziak, though unfortunately, it probably still will. So, you know, um, be careful. And if you're, you're thinking about holding somebody to ransom, don't. That'd be swell. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Right here, listen, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. Till then, please look after yourselves. My gift.